I'm Stavros. Good morning and welcome. And yes, I'm at the Icon Exhibition Centre here in Lisburn in Northern Ireland for Dubshed 2019. So the gates will be opened up shortly. We'll drive in and see what cars are on display this year. Let's go. Okay, the gates have just been opened. It's 8 a.m. Uh, the guys are gonna drive in here. We've got a five series there on coilovers. Then we have this Mark III Golf GTI, mint condition. And then we have a Golf VR6, Mark III as well. Rare enough, the VR6, with the green lenses at the back. And a Mark VII Golf there as well. Okay. We better make our way in and see what dub shed and see what dub shed's all about. Okay, so they're all just queuing up behind me there, getting ready to head into the show. Oh yeah, by the way, I must tell you as well that uh, I did get my green card for travelling up north with this whole Brexit thing. Yeah. Anyway, we'll get in and check out the cars. We've got some stowaways in nah, the back, nah, nah, guys. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> it's completely legit. It's completely he, legit. he wants me to lock them in, so I'm gonna lock them in here. <laughs> okay, guys, off you go. Have a good one. <laughs> okay, so we've got the Lamborghini Gallardo here. So it's not just German cars and Japanese cars. You'll also see Italian cars. So yeah, and look at the dials there on the inside. Also green accents all around them. So that's quite nice. Oh, we've got a Toyota MR2 here. We've got a Fiesta there with a load of gaffer tape on the front of it. And uh, what else have we got here? Yeah, the 2002. Really like them. Really nice car. And the Scirocco. And another Scirocco. So I really like the look of this Toyota Celica GT4. It's from 1994 and it's got 270 BHP. So if you were to buy a genuine one of these, a Group A rally car, you're talking about £80,000. But uh, this one, it's hard to know the value on this one. Uh, sort of a replica, but uh, very nicely done. Okay guys, we're gonna have a bit of fun here. We've got the stopwatch here, and I'm gonna time this man in this E92 BMW 335i, because there's a big long queue for the car wash here, but these guys, they're very slow to wash their cars. <laughs> so come on guys, hurry up. But uh, yeah, we'll time this guy for the crack and see how long he is. Okay, he's pulled in, guys. Start the clock, here we go. Stop the clock. Six minutes, eight seconds. Now that's how quick you should be, guys, washing your car. That, that's even quicker than a normal drive through car wash with a Pandem body kit. And we've got the only one in Ireland, the Jetta Coupe. So it's based on a Mark V Jetta rear end and a Mark V Golf front end. But uh, yeah, I do like the wheels on it. it looks quite well. well. There you have it, the only one in Ireland. The Mark V Jetta slash Golf Coupe. How come the queue is taking so long? I don't know. They're very, they're very slow, guys. Yeah, not idea. Yeah, very, they don't want to hurry up here. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> yeah, Volkswagen Beetle. Uh, let me just walk down here because I want to show you Hi, the... Mom. Hey! Hi, Mom. Hello, Mom! Mark III Golf. <laughs> Gee, 16 valve. Hey. Very nice. Hey, your number plate fell off. <laughs> and this guy's number plate fell off as well. <laughs> There's a lot of missing... And this one as well. The Land Rover Defender. I really like the Defender, I really like that. And look, this, this is the M5 you want, guys. The M5 competition. So these have around 610 brake horsepower. They're a weapon of a car, the F90. So uh, yeah, I really like these. I'd love to have a burn up uh, Western Airport in one of these. 
be interesting to see how they are on a quarter mile race with a standard M5. They're around 120,000 pounds, but uh, yeah, wicked car. Now we've got a Mark IV Golf here, the R32, and the Nissan Skyline R32 also. So yeah, that's a bit of a coincidence, isn't it? R32 and R32. Okay. <laughs> Yeah! I was going to call it a Lexus IS. <laughs> it's the it's, it's the Alteza, huh? Have have us Jap boys been banished to a separate shed? Yes. We're we're not good enough for the Vag boys. So I've got a pointer with me, yeah. Look, look, look at this Alteza. It's on air. Now he's going to drop it down. <laughs> Go on, drop it down. There you go. <laughs> Look how low it sits. Yeah. So yeah. Shout out the low. You order. boys, you boys. I'm keeping an eye on you lot. <laughs> okay, we've got Rocket Bunny here. He's going to give us a couple of revs here. <laughs> I think these boys have the rev off. Yeah, they've won. <laughs> this man is a vag whore. Look at this. Okay, it's now 11 a.m. and there's no one else queuing up for the car wash. One guy has drove off there. He's given up because uh, the queue is just too long. Yeah, it's 11 a.m. now. Uh, one more hour to go before the show is open to the public. Guys, would you look at this? This is a 1970 Mercedes. 300 SEL So this guy hopes to be racing this at the Monte Carlo rally next year in 2020 So it has 450 horsepower and 660 pound-foot of torque and He's shaved off around 700 kilos roughly off the weight of the car. He's got the magnesium wheels This is just <laughs> unreal look roll cage and all So uh, that's a piece of history there so yeah, he's bringing it here and putting it on display. Just look at the arches there. Look at the camber on the wheel, look. Look at that. <laughs> I love that now. Your 1970 Mercedes 300 SEL. joined by Aiden from NI BMW. Now Aiden, as far as I am aware, this is the first time that this has been done. You have every generation of BMW M5 here at you, Dubshed. Yes, that's correct. This year we've been very lucky. Uh, we've actually had JKC specialist cars of Coleraine. First of all, first car that you can see just to yeah. the right here. It's a brand new M5. Now this model is a competition pack one. So what that basically means is that there is more power. 626 brake horsepower uh, yeah. compared to the 606. I, I love these, Aiden. <laughs> these are, of course I would take this as the most powerful one. This is the most powerful one there. Yeah. However, they also come with, these are the first car that BMW have done, the, the first M car that comes with four wheel drive as standard. It yeah. is switchable that you can put it into a rear wheel drive mode itself yeah. there. So these are the first because 626 brake horsepower through the rear wheels could be interesting. Yeah, so I love these, love them. But so uh, yeah, then we move down to so the next, or this the one, previous this, gen. This one we have here there is the yeah. F10. This is the previous model M5, using a V8 twin turbo as well. Both the, both the F90 and the F10 use a similar engine there. It's uh, been revised for the F90 so that it gives more power, but it's V8 twin turbo. Now these are 545 brake horsepower approximately there. Yeah. And now we have the last, the previous model uh, again, which is an E60. Yeah. These are nationally aspirated V10. Previously had one of these myself. Uh, seven speed SMG, uh, five liter V10, naturally aspirated there. Based on the Formula One engine, the S85, back when BMW were racing in Formula One in the mid 2000s there. But they did give their fair issues problem-wise, didn't they? Ah, it's like <laughs> anything. Anything can anything can give problems. Yeah, it's the like E60. Anything. It's all about maintenance and stuff like that. There, yeah. V10 is sort of known for its 
reliable the issues there has been yeah. some people who have had problems with them and yet there are some owners who have had no problem outside normal wear and tear items stuff like that there yeah. but we go on to what a lot of people think is the best m5 ever made the e39 right. uh v8 uh natural aspirate 4.9 liter uh 400 brake horsepower this ran from these were unveiled in 1999 so three years after the five series made its debut uh most sort of the hit dealerships in the early 2000s uh, a lot of people still like the 39 values for these have started to climb as well there what was previously one for around five thousand pounds is now double that double it low wow. mileage ones can be 15 to 20 <laughs> and even super super low mileage ones are well into the 20s and why why is it that these are going up now Aidan? the thing is is that people are sort of watching what cars are doing there because E30 M3s have taken off their price nowadays so people are trying to see what's the next M car yeah. is it going to reach the same kind of prices as an E30 M3 probably not but if it's an M car they're only going one way and it's up in value right and now we come to I, uh, the generation I, I like four. these I like these this yeah, is a the E34 M5. These were made from roughly 1990 to 1995 there. Yeah. This one is a 3.8, so it came as either a 3.6 six-cylinder or a 3.8 six-cylinder. This one is a liter 3.8 there. This car has been, uh, this car is an original Northern Ireland car uh, yeah. and has only 36,000 miles on it there. And it's in concourse condition. Yeah, it's mint, it's mint it is. It's amazing what you can find yeah, tucked I away in places that in one. Northern Ireland. And then and we move on to the first generation. <laughs> back in the late 80s, yeah. this was the first shape of M5 that they ever brought out there. Six cylinder as well. Yeah. Uh, these were produced from about 1986 onwards there. Uh, yeah. These roughly 1986 to about 1989, so a fairly short production life. But they are very long, they're very low numbers within these. And it's just trying to find an E28 full stop, let alone yes. an M5. It's and Aiden, like, what sort of money are these fetching now? Say, low mileage. If you, if you were able to find one, you could be chatting between 20, 20 to thirty thousand. Right. Some people would say that there might be more, but it all depends on mileage, condition, stuff like that. Yeah. But we have a couple of other cars here. We have a day yeah. car edition E ninety two M three. Yeah. Uh, owned by another club member who, who previously had a day car E thirty six M three. Then right. beside we have an E ninety two Coupe. You can see the differences between the M three and the Coupe. Yeah, so a couple other things. Beside uh, that again, we've got a nice E30. Yeah, this is uh, definitely very dub shed uh, with yeah. lots, of, lots of modifications and stuff. But yeah. as you can see, lots of things done to it, and the paint in the engine base is as good as the paint in any of the panels as well. Okay, we move on from the E30. Now we come to something that's very, very special. Yes. <laughs> this is a recently restored 2002 Ti. Uh, yeah. Ti is for the Touring International. This is an injection model. This car has just finished being restored last year. Um, the owner, Chris, has spent a lot of time and effort at getting it to this level, um, and it really, really is perfection. Yeah. I don't think the camera's gonna just show. It's one of those ones you really need to see this yourself. Wow. We're hoping to have this at a few other events this year, but the level of detail and finishing with everything is yeah. top notch. It's up there with the best. And, and you will just not find and Aiden, the 2002 Turbo in this particular yes. shape. Uh, what sort of money are the 2002 Turbos fetching 02 now? Turbos seem to have skyrocketed over the past few yeah. years. From a car that was in the 20 to 30 thousand pound, is now rocketing up to 80 to 100 thousand pounds. What for a 2002 Turbo? For an 02 Turbo. What for an 02 <laughs> Turbo? Simply because of the rarity factor. They're yeah. all they were all left-hand drive, and they were they're known as the first production turbocharged car. Now there's a few arguments, the Americans say that they had a car first, the Chevrolet Corsair, but in the 1970s, turbocharging was still in its infancy, and All it right. hadn't made its way into the production cars, like this. Like this predates the 3 Series, such as the E30 and stuff that we saw before. Yeah. This is the basic of the car that saved BMW from going bankruptcy yeah. when they were introduced in the late 60s, before they were bought out, before they were nearly bought out by Mercedes. So this is the car that put BMW on the map, especially in the likes of North America, where they where they sold in big numbers. So so Aiden, whoever has a 2002 turbo, they're sitting on a bit of money. Absolutely. <laughs> if you if you can find one, buy it. Yeah. If you can find one, buy it. Hold on. Oh to it. yeah, but this is still a fantastic example. This one is in absolute perfect condition. Okay, we'll move on to this. 
What year is this one, Aiden? That there, it would be a 90s, it's a yeah. 90s 3 series, or it's an E36 shape. This has been re-sprayed in an Audi yellow colour there, on air ride, with a nice set of deep dish BBS wheels. Yeah. And we're still cleaning away at it at the moment there. Yeah. So we'll just move very, on very to... Dodgy. And now, the, everyone's favourite car of the moment, yeah. the E30 M3. This one has been owned by the, by the current owner for about 15 years, who right. picked it up. Uh, we bought it and it was just parked at a petrol station and it's just there's so many stories of people who have bought these and didn't really hold on to them price of these has absolutely skyrocketed e30 m3 evo 2s are a hundred thousand pounds plus these for a non-evo edition this is a 1986 so an earlier one yeah these start anywhere from 30 to 40 thousand pounds all right. depending on age mileage condition and of course the right hand drives are less desirable than the left hand drive. Right hand drive was a, was a conversion that was offered by the likes of the dealerships yeah. back in the day um, using 325i steering rack and steering column but yeah. that was the owner's choice at then. Those cars, they are out there but most people seem to prefer the completely original ones. Oh yeah, absolutely. It has that's to be it. left hand drive. That's it. I really like them. That's it. But uh, yeah, that's So we've pretty that, cool. we have a couple of other things on the stand in the background there just but it's couple of other things we've got a new model 6 series grand coupe behind but we have a good yeah. mixture on the stand this year as always both hey. older newer Aiden will, will you tell those guys that they're done it's clean yeah it's I think done. That, <laughs> there'll be plenty of guys still cleaning away at plenty of other they're things. still cleaning guys the show's been on for the last three hours like hasn't huh? but uh it's Aiden thank you very much for that us. No yeah, check them out NI BMW for all your needs and wants regarding BMW information the guys can uh, let you know. And we're also on <laughs> Facebook as well. We have a Facebook page, so join up to that. Yeah, cheers, Aiden. Thank Thomas, you. Good to see you. Thank you. Cheers. Okay, we're going to move on from NI BMW, and we're going to swing over to the EK9 Honda Civic Type R. I think this one is for sale. Around 8,000, I think. Somebody told me it's for sale. Oh, there, there's always one, Tony. There's, there's always, always one, one car that's going to set off its alarm. Um, yeah, we saw that Ford Fiesta there earlier on, around 186 brake horsepower out of that, and she hopes to get it up to 195 at some point, I was talking to her earlier. Okay, Tony, you're going to take us on a little bit of a tour of Scooby Nights. Yeah, we have four cars in the show here at Dubshed this year. Yeah. Um, Scooby Nights, not to be confused with the Irish, uh, <laughs> Irish Subaru Drivers Club. Right. Um, we have a page, a page on Facebook, you know, it's, it's not a club, it's just a page, you can join in. Yeah. Just Subaru pictures and stuff like that. Uh, okay, first let's have a walk through here. What you have? First car we have is Martin's. It's a 2.5 Hawkeye WRX. Um, as you can see, he's the airlift kit. He's the big Wang. He has the carbon spoiler. He has a few other pieces from kind of RPG wing, huh? uh, Carbon Performance, and then he's the rotor wheels, window vents, and stuff. You know, a um, few nice touches on it. Bit different, uh, although. It's, it is a daily driven car, it's proper. As you swing around behind you, we have Paddy's Bugeye STI. Uh, again, all sponsored by RPG Carbon and the boys at Scooby Nights. Uh, the rotor wheels, he has carbon eyebrows, carbon air ducts, which are extremely rare. Carbon side repeaters, again, RPG performance. Um, now, all it is, is it's lowered, it's not bagged, it's a static car. Mm. And then he's the carbon covers again, all RPG. The uh, Voltex uh, spoiler, then he has carbon risers, which was actually one of the first sets in Ireland uh, to have that kind of spoiler on a Subaru. Then he has the, the lip uh, extensions from HT Autos uh, on the side skirts and the rear spats and the Blitz exhaust. Very nice. Then as we swing around, we have. Uh, Davy's car. This is a Legacy GTB uh, E-Tune model twin turbo, uh, two litre. Uh, very tidy car. New set of wheels, re-sprayed in the original. It's a copper colour, uh, but again, it's original and it's it's just so rare to see. Um, originally was owned by a friend of ours called Eileen, and then Davy ended up getting it. It needed a lot of loving, but over the last kind of year or so, it's it's had a lot done to it so really tidy car and again he has the, the the sticker on the back window which is actually it's um twins inside but he actually just had a set of twins with a, with his partner so all right 
Uh, very tidy car. And Tony, we have a very nice R32 skyline. Yeah, R32 skyline. skyline. Uh, yeah. GTR, again, now these, they're getting hard to pick up. Yeah. Massively creeping up in value, yeah. They've but the owner's not going to sell this one. It's not for sale, yeah? Oh, yeah, <laughs> this is the owner here. <laughs> I didn't realise. Do you want to say no, hello? He, hello, he, how are you? I follow you on YouTube, yeah. Oh, you're not selling it, though? No, I'm not selling it. All right, forget it, boys. <laughs> this, is, this one is not going to America, okay? <laughs> going to finish off here now with this last impress. This is actually my own personal car. Uh, it's a 2005 Pro Drive Edition um, STI, a genuine one, uh, Wide Track UK. Now, this one, it's I've, I've only got it recently enough, but it's starting to get some love. It's only had a full engine rebuild. Uh, it's got the PFF seven wheels, mud flaps, you know, all the, the regular stuff. Then the front lip as well, just to bring it down that little bit. And then I have a, the, the rear spats and side skirt extensions but I couldn't get them on for the show in time, unfortunately. And best of all is <laughs> the 555 on the red, Colin oh, McRae. nice. Yeah, so. Nice, nice touch. So just been in here polishing the car all morning and yeah. hopefully now it gets a couple of nice pictures taken of it and we'll see what happens. That's great. Tony, thank you very much. Davros, thanks ever so much. Okay, we've got the McLaren 720S and we have the forged wheels there, the Quantum 44s. So we've 21s at the rear and 20s at the front and they'll set you back around 4,000 pounds. But they do look pretty well. Okay, so we've now got the rarest car here at the show. This is a 1939 DKW Auto Union. So have a look at this little engine in it. It's a 680cc two-stroke engine. That's the fuel tank, and look at the gear stick rod going the whole way through and into the car on the inside. Uh, yeah, this is a very rare piece. And if I can just get back to the back there, you'll see the fuel tank sitting at the back. So you would mix that 25 to one with your two-stroke oil. But uh, that is a very rare car, your 1939 DKW Auto Union. Okay guys, did you ever think of racing your lawnmower? Well, we have a bunch of them here from the Northern Ireland Lawnmower Racing Association. So we've got the New Holland, we've got the Ford, we've got the Husqvarna, and we've got this one here with the handlebars and all on it. Look, the lowrider, look. And this one here, the Pink Panther, and this is how muddy it can get on some of the races. Look at this. And look at this one up in the air, look. So yeah, check them out. Lawnmower Racing Association. <laughs> Okay, let's check out this 1977 Beetle, the 1200cc Beetle. Now guys, <laughs> there's something very special about this car, you're not going to believe it, okay? This car has only 256 miles on it from new. Everything is original, all the paintwork on the exterior, all original paintwork, even the tires are original from 1977. The only part of this car that has been re-sprayed is the underneath. So it was uh, all re-sprayed black. But everything else you're looking at is original. Original spare wheel. And look at this, this is quite unusual, look. See the airline going from the valve of the tire into the windscreen washer bottle. So that pressurizes the windscreen washer bottle to spray up onto your windscreen. So I've not seen that before. But uh, there you have it, original equipment on this uh, Volkswagen Beetle. So would you believe that it was first registered in 2008? So this car had no registration on it from 77 to 2008. And uh, am I okay to open it? <laughs> yeah, I'll just get the owner there just to open it, just to give you a quick look inside. But let me just have you a quick look at the engine bay as well, look. All original. All that's been changed on this engine is the spark plugs. Everything you see, original. But, uh, yeah, 
even the back window see the dealer sticker all original brand new from 77 but let's just have a quick look inside it's got a four-speed gearbox and uh, all the interior it's a brand new car it's more or less a brand new car 256 miles but yeah this has uh, blown me away now uh, somebody told me about it that's why I came in and had a look for it but yeah that is quite something guys oh yeah and do you want to know how much it cost in 1977 it was 2228 pounds because he has the original price list and all <laughs> up on the window that's how much it cost but yeah that's pretty special now your 1977 beetle with only 256 miles on it Okay, that's where I'm going to wrap things up today from the Icon Exhibition Centre here in Lisburn in Northern Ireland. I really enjoyed my day today going around checking out all these cars and talking to the owners. The passion that these guys have for their cars and looking after them is just admirable. I really, really appreciate these guys displaying their cars for everyone else to see. It's just fantastic. But guys, I'm going to wrap it up there. I do hope you can join me again next weekend for another video. Yes something special coming up next weekend wait for it guys <laughs> okay i'll chat you all in take care guys thanks for watching Cheers! be the fastest guys to wash their car yeah oh start of the clock two minutes 37 seconds <laughs> it's not a nissan sunny it's a nissan pulsar <laughs>